Galatians 3, chapter 3. Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dearly beloved, gifts are fun. They're exciting. The wrapping that gives some hint to what could be inside that gift. The ribbons and the bows that dress it all up. Someone sure cares a lot about you to give you such a nice gift. So you open it, and there it is. A Heller Airbus A3 d model airplane. What a beaut. All 241 pieces of it. How many of you have ever built a model airplane before? It can be a lot of work, can it? First, if you were like me, one of the things you would do is jump on your smartphone or your computer and Google, how in the world do I build a model airplane? Because for myself, I've never built one before. But you would search tutorials such as, how do I get these decals to stay on? What do I do if I get the glue on my fingers? Or how do I dry brush the tail wing? Or the best yet, how do I get this plane to fly? Okay, so I know it won't actually fly unless you have a good imagination. In reality, it can be a lot of work to, to receive a gift that comes with some assembly required. Now, I'm sure most of you have received something that requires some sort of assembly, be it a baby crib, a stroller, such as my wife and I have received, a bookshelf, maybe a vacuum cleaner. Or even just getting the gift out of the packaging can be a lot of work. Now, you're, you're very appreciative of this gift, and, and you're so grateful for it. It's a wonderful gift. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking, Ugh, I'm going to have to do some work before I can enjoy this gift. All right, enough with the analogy. What if, in fact, I came before you tonight and said, Brothers and sisters in Christ, your salvation, the greatest gift God has ever given you, comes with those same requirements, some assembly required. You have to do something in order to complete it. Just receiving the gift of faith and salvation from God isn't enough. God has entrusted you to go forth and do something to complete it. Hang on to that thought. We'll come back to it. In today's reading of Galatians, we find Paul expressing complete frustration with the Christians in Galatia. God had used Paul to bring them the gift of salvation through the word of the gospel. And after believing that, after receiving the Holy Spirit in faith, they're now listening to a different gospel, one that is telling them that their salvation comes with some assembly required. There are false teachers who are telling the Galatians that they need to adhere to the book of Torah, the book of God's law, in order to complete that salvation. They're denying the grace-based message of the Old Testament. Paul calls this the works of Torah or the works of the law. This is false. It was grace in the Old Testament from God just as it is grace in the New Testament. The false teachers taught that it was necessary to observe the dietary laws of the Jewish people the, to keep the Sabbath and to accept the rite of circumcision in order to complete their salvation and stay in God's favor, or as Paul writes it, looking to the flesh to make them perfect after they had already begun with the Spirit. The problem with taking this approach and believing that they can, through these works of the law, assemble their gift is that God's Torah, God's law, condemns. No one is perfect, nor could anyone fully keep God's book of Torah, nor is anyone justified just by trying. Paul warns that this course of action is dangerous, even fatal. For the Torah itself makes a most dreadful claim and a threat to those who cannot keep it perfectly. We read in Deuteronomy, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of Torah. The Torah demands continuous, flawless performance. And if these Galatians could not keep to the Torah perfectly, they were condemned. 
like the Galatians, we too may be tempted or, or influenced by false teachers today that there's still work to be done to complete our salvation. And although we receive that salvation through faith in our baptisms, we are still required to be perfect and to perfect it by following the works of God's Torah, which includes the Ten Commandments. Now, there's two types of Christians that may believe this false teaching. The first, they believe that they need to live up to this perfect law in all that they do. They realize that this is impossible, and they are terribly depressed. They're downtrodden and saddened. They will never be able to assemble their gift of salvation. Like that model airplane, it can be messy, it's sticky, and the instructions can seem impossible. They are constantly asking themselves, is this even worth it? And they may, in fact, turn away from the gift altogether. Then there's the other type of Christian, the one that believes that they can actually keep to the book of Torah, keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. They love their wife and their kids. They honor their mother and father. They do not commit adultery. They don't steal. They attend worship services every Sunday and Wednesday. They believe in their heart that they can keep those Ten Commandments perfectly, or at least good enough for God. So do you tonight find yourself in either of these camps that you need to perfectly follow God's Torah? Are you depressed? Are you downtrodden because you cannot meet the mark that God has so unrealistically placed in the sky? Are you saddened because you realize that you'll never be good enough for God? Or are you confident? Are you confident that you can, in fact, keep the commandments, that you can, in fact, do what it takes to assemble this salvation, this gift that God has given you? Well, if you are either type of these so-called Christians, Paul addresses you with the same warning that he asked the Galatians. Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Are you foolish enough to believe that you have any part in your salvation? Paul continues, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of God's Torah and do them. Dear saints, relieve yourselves of this notion. You will never be good enough on your own to perfectly follow God's law. To those of you who think you are not good enough, you're not. To those of you who think you are good enough, you're not either. We are all sinful. We all fall short of the glory of God. But take heart, dear brothers and sisters. Praise be to God. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming that curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. Through the faith given us in our baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit creates within us a new heart, a heart that desires to do good and to follow Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your doing. There's nothing you can do. It is the gift of God, no assembly required. What wonderful news Paul brings us in today's reading. God has given us the greatest gift of all, forgiveness of sins and everlasting salvation. This gift comes fully assembled because God assembled it for you. He took two pieces of wood, a few nails, and his only son. He constructed it when he nailed Christ to that tree. He wrapped it in thorns and placed it in a tomb. And then bursting forth, Christ comes to you with his very body and blood. He wraps you in white fully redeemed and holy, blameless, a perfect new creation fully assembled before the Father. Today, we stand in freedom under this cross. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.